Hey there, CT Tinker here. Thanks for tuning in. In this video I will cover vertex groups and weight painting. Vertex groups are using weights and help you to define influences of bones and modifiers, and therefore great tools for rigging and also for animation. Let's focus on the fundamentals at first. To add weights to an object you will need a vertex group. As weights are added to vertices, the object requires a decent amount of geometry, otherwise it's not possible to define weights properly. Now let's get into weight paint mode. When you just start painting on the geometry, a vertex group gets automatically added to your object. To add, remove and select vertex groups manually, navigate to the object data properties, vertex groups. When it comes to weights, blue means no influence, green medium influence and red means full influence. In between the influences you will see a gradient. To modify weights there are lots of brushes which help to influence the weights. The brushes main settings you will find at the top of the 3D view. In the active tool and workspace settings are even more dedicated controls. First off there's the draw brush, which is mandatory for weight painting. At the top or when right clicking, you can modify the weight that gets assigned to the selected vertex group, the radius of the brush and also how powerful the effect of the brush is when applied. There are also various blend modes which you might recognize from the shader editor. Besides, you can also change up the stroke and fall off of the brush. The blur brush helps to smooth out weights, which is a really great way to achieve smooth transitions between influenced and non-influenced areas. Next up, the average brush averages out weights within the brush's radius. To smudge weights around, use the smear brush. The smear weight depends on where you start smearing. Last but not least, there's the gradient tool, with which you can draw a line to apply a weight gradient to selected vertices. To figure out the weight of a specific area, you can use the eyedropper tool to sample the weight in the 3D view using the mouse. There are also lots of useful filters which help the most when the vertex groups already have some weights applied. Specifically, I use smooth and levels a lot and therefore usually add them to my quick favorites by right clicking them and choose add to quick favorites. This allows to access the filters when pressing Q. Let's check out the smooth filter. When applying the smoothing, all the weights are getting smoothed out. In the bottom left corner, the filter settings can be applied. It happens that you smooth down the weights too much and to set the highest weight to 1 and the lowest to 0, use normalize. The levels filter can come in handy when the weights should be expanded in proportion. Other really useful functions are mirror, invert, clean and besides just play around with the filters, may others are helpful for your workflows. If you want to focus on just a specific part of your mesh while painting and applying filters, you may want to use masks. Tap into edit mode, select the faces of vertices you want to paint on and use paint mask or vertex selection respectively. Make sure to not press A, otherwise you will mess up your selection even in weight paint mode. You can also hide geometry. To do so, tap into edit mode, select the geometry you want to be visible, then press Ctrl I to invert the selection, then press H to hide the selection. When you press tap again, you will be back in weight paint mode, then just enable a mask. Now the faces are hidden while in weight paint mode. Make sure vertices in the mask are selected or press A to select all of them in weight paint mode to paint on them. Well, go back in edit mode, press Alt H to reveal the hidden geometry again, disable the paint mask and get back to basics. Once you are done painting, you can use the weights in example in a modifier. The forming modifiers usually come with a vertex group option to bind their influences to vertex weights. When working with bones, there are a couple of neat little tricks to make your life easier. Usually, you don't want to create vertex groups for each bone one by one and paint them. To bind your mesh to your bones, select the mesh, then shift select the bones and press Ctrl P. You will be prompted with a bunch of parenting options and usually you will be aiming for automatic weights. Blender's automatic weights usually delivers great results and are therefore a really good foundation to get started. To access the vertex groups of bones in a convenient manner, select your bones, then shift select your mesh. 
By doing so, you can shift select bones while in weight paint mode, paint directly on their vertex groups and also post them. This helps a lot to find deformation issues caused by automatic weights. When posing, make sure you have only the bone selected you actually want to pose. To deselect all bones, press A twice. If you are working with a rig using many custom controllers like the Richify rig, make sure to enable the controls that transform the deform bones you want to paint on. Usually you cannot transform deformed bones on rigs which have been properly set up, so pose your mesh using the control bones and then paint on the deformed bones that cause the issues. When working with characters, you may want to enable x-axis mirroring to not paint the weights twice. However, as you have bones and mesh and influences enabled and visible at the same time, the scene gets kinda cluttered. And it's sometimes hard to see the deformation issues. In this case, it's helpful to create a separate 3D view and disable the viewport overlays. Another point are filters. When working with filters, the filter options change. Previously, you've had the option to apply them to the active group or all groups. Now you also have the option to apply them to the selected pose or deform bones. So make sure you have only selected the bones you want to apply the filter to, consider to press A twice to deselect all bones, and then shift select all the bones you want to apply the filter to. As you are usually only creating vertex groups on deform bones, you can usually take either of the options. As mentioned, while painting weights to a character, it's very useful to use x-axis mirroring as it always is just useful to focus on one side of the mesh and mirroring the weights to the vertex groups on the other side. But keep in mind the mirroring is just an effect for brushes, not filters. Make sure you select all the bones you want to be influenced by the filter before applying the filter. Well, that's about it. Hope you have learned something. Thanks for all the support, comments and feedback. And especially thanks to my Patreons. Would be awesome if you join. Well, see you around.